All right, good morning, folks. Welcome to Coffee and Craps with uh, with old Johnny here from Pro Craps on Casino Gaming TV on a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. God, it's hump day already. This week is cruising by. Holy crap. Um, here we go. We're going to be uh, another day of making 50 bucks. Let's hope we can do it. We had kind of a rough day yesterday, actually, across all of our ways of trying this stuff. So let's just jump right into it. Actually, that's wrong. I'm going to go. I'm going to go here. Um, that's clear. Um, what's going to happen today is this. Um, I'll do a quick paycheck recap like I always do. We're going to go to the table and make 50 bucks with some hybrids, with some presses. We're going to do a little bit of, I'm calling it kind of ride it up today. We're going to ride the bets up a little bit. Maybe use some hybrid play to make things enhanced a little bit. We'll see. Um, got some ideas from some of you all, of course, and I'll put those up there on screen in just a minute. And reminders of what's happening um, in the world Change passwords. We talked about it yesterday with the MGM major attack. I mean, that was a brutal cyber attack. Um, your data is now at risk. So change your passwords, please. Not just at MGM, change your passwords everywhere. It's a pain in the ass to do it. Trust me, it's a pain in the ass to get your passwords changed. But all the sites you use all the time, your bank, your whatever, your bills, like I have all my bills are online. I changed every single account got changed, right? Make sure you change your passwords. Keep yourself safe. Um, another reminder for you, by the way, too, a couple of things here. One is, if you're not already subscribed to Jack Ace, get subscribed to Jack Ace. He's in our Discord. Um, he's primarily doing roulette videos, but he's got a couple of blackjack ones. Um, he's like me. He's he's a he's a computer scientist. He's a programmer, so he writes a ton of apps. He's got a ton of apps for like. He's written like a flashcard app to help you learn crap or a blackjack basic strategy. He's got roulette simulators that he's written. Um, he and I got to do some collaborations on some coding things, but I think he's a guy you should watch. If you like me at all, because the way I break things down, the way I, I rely on math, at least to make some decisions and sort of understand how these things work. He's your guy. He's entertaining. He's interesting. He's got great production quality and his videos are some of the best gambling content you will find the way he breaks things down. So get on Jack Ace's channel. The guy's awesome. He's killing it. He's part of our network. He's going to be giving uh, CGTV some roulette and some maybe blackjack content as well. We may have him on some lives, start replicating how we do craps with other games. He's going to be one of the guys that helps us get that started. Love him to get on that channel. Um, I, I also want to call it wager me this. Jacob um, took a long time off of craps. He was doing a lot of sports and other things. He's still doing sports, obviously, but um, he's back in craps and it's good to have Jacob back in the fold. I love watching Jacob. He's just like, you know, when I do my lives in the garage, my, my daily paycheck, I try and be like channel my inner Jacob. You know what I mean? Like he's just such a good, calming dude. And he's got, he makes great sense all the time. So I, I, I respect the hell out of Jacob and um, yeah, I'm glad he's back. He's, he's back doing, doing just solid craps content. So if you've forgotten about him because he hasn't been around in a while, get back to Jacob. Um, he's got lives going most every day now, which is really cool to see that he's doing it live, not just uploading stuff. So it's fantastic. Um, cause you get the emotion too, which is awesome. Um, and a reminder, we're doing our, uh, Seattle meetup here this weekend. So starting Friday, folks are gonna be flying into Seattle on Friday. We're going to meet up at, um, one of the coolest little casinos, um, outside of Seattle, uh, Snoqualmie on Friday, I think four or five o'clock, we got a, a reserved table down there and they have a great steakhouse for dinner. That's got this amazing view. Um, just a cool place to be. So that starts Friday, but Saturday morning, we're going to have invite folks over to the house here. And besides getting the, you know, the, the laughable studio tour, we'll go in the garage and we'll play on the big table in the garage. My plan was to have like Corey and Glenn who have had this kind of really cool grudge match. Let's have them play live. Let's have me and because Jeremy, Jeremy from color will be here too. He and I can deal to them live and we can get both cameras going. It's going to be kind of a cool thing. So I think we can do like a Friday night fight style thing live mono a mono on the big table with them throwing their own dice. That'll be really cool. That's gonna be a fun, a fun episode, I think. And we'll film some practice and having some fun too. So we should have a good time here. So earmark some time Saturday morning, probably about nine, 10 o'clock Pacific time. I know it's going to be early for you on the East coast. Um, you know, sleeping in and all that kind of stuff, but join us for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I really kind of can't wait for that. Uh, Jacob's live now, whatever. Um, go watch him. I mean, he doesn't, like I said, that's, that's cool. Go, go hang out with Jacob. I don't, I don't care. We're, we're all friends here. It's, it's good. All right. What's next for me is this. We're going to recap yesterday. Yesterday's Molly session was not great. It was not great. We, um, 
never hit it. We lost 240 bucks or whatever it was yesterday. Um, just was the, one of those days where we just, we never caught the roll. We never got like, we had like three times maybe all day where, where a come bet got paid. And I think only once of those we had odds on it, twice we had odds on it, once we didn't have the odds set yet. It was just one of those days where just, you know, we were sp sporadic and just didn't work out. Come bang is a tough way to make a living. It just is. Um, we've been bypassing the pass line. We may go back to pass line today. I've been bypassing the odds on purpose. Next week, we'll start adding odds right away, but that's part of it, right? We're not getting our odds payments on the on those quick hitters, which kind of, whatever, it cost us some money. Um, I think I want to work the come out. Um, we are working the come out with odds if we ever get them set. I'm considering adding the field early. I was going to wait till next week to do it, but I may add the field in this week. And the field is kind of cool. Like it gives us protection on the craps numbers, obviously. It also gives us a little bit of prepayment on the four, nine, and 10 as 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 come points, which I like. And, I, and I'm thinking like, if I have a field bet in there and I catch a point of nine, let's say, I get my 10 bucks off that field, I'm putting that on his odds right away. That In that case, I wouldn't wait for the odds or for the, the comes to be set. Just set them with those wins. So. It may get us accelerated. It may cost us a bunch of money too, but it may accelerate us. So there is, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm considering rolling that out today. I've been talking about it for three or four days now. And I think it might be time to consider doing that. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a risky move, but I think, yeah, Jens, Jen, Jen, it feels a loser, but um, I don't know, man. It, it, it's one of those things where it's, it's not quite a 50-50 bet, but in the come, the times that it wins are going to accelerate us a little bit because you're going to get earlier odds and actually free paid odds. I'm, I'm considering it. I don't know. Yesterday it would have been good for us. Um, I don't know. Let's, let, let's, 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 let's consider it as an option. That's all I'm saying. I want to put it out there as an option. I may side bet that and see how, how, how it would have worked kind of thing and just kind of play it like that. But we'll maybe I'll play our regular bet straight. Anyway, that's the, that's the Molly. Um, five and two so far. It's it's a good strategy, but it's not a it's not a walk up and get out of there quick paycheck strategy. You're going to have to get a 15 plus roller with the right numbers to make this thing make money on the regular. So that's the problem with it. It can whack a, a monster roll pretty good and have some pretty good home runs built into it. But in the early quick building up stages, it's pretty it's pretty hard to make money with it. So anyway, that that's my uh, that's my recap on the Molly so far. I'm just, I'm not loving it. I don't like leaving it completely to chance like that. And it, it just feels like we're, we're, we're like we're having issues there. So um, something else, by the way, um, it does it avoids the come seven wins. It does. You're hundred percent right. It does avoid those, it avoids those wins out. But if you take a, a avoided come seven win and say the nine hits, we get, we catch the 10 bucks and use that as odds. Those odds are double free. Right, they're vigless. Obviously, they're you know there's no house edge on those things. Plus, they got paid for by the come win. If you happen to buckshot that number, that's a that's a freebie. I look at that as like that's a completely free bet that overcomes the sevens that you don't get. I don't know. It, it's I'm I'm literally 50 50 on making that bet or not. We're gonna we're gonna run it. I ran it yesterday, kind of in in simulation mode, out there on the table. Today, I'm gonna make make the bets. Maybe I'll make the bet next to my bet. And say what would have happened if we'll do that again today, just to kind of get a lens on it. That's again, that's the point of doing the show this way, right? Is we're going to try and make money, but I'm also trying to experiment and see kind of where the where are the the tickle points, as they say. Okay, all right, let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Um, let's see. We are going to do fifty bucks, making fifty bucks, write it up style. So I'm going to go right to the table. I'm going to go play a little bit here, roll some stuff out. Um, and we're going to do uh, a couple of ways of making 50 bucks today. So today's way, today's ways um, are some familiar ways, um, things you've heard of, the Lagerman, the Squeeze Play, the Skill 66. Um, we're going to do a little bit of Skill Switch. Some a, a, a subscriber sent me a strategy that's very reminiscent of the Skill Switch. Um, and we'll do a little bit of Horseman. Ways that are either hybrid style um, where you're, you're, you got a little bit of, I say like you're selling wolf tickets a little bit. You can get a little bit more aggressive on your box hits, but really it's about riding the box up and then pulling the box down. That's the idea today is we're, we're going to go up and down. Or we're going to go out and down a couple of hits and bye-bye. That's going to be the point today. 50 bucks in two hits, ideally two hits or less. It may not be two rolls. 
like it was yesterday. Yesterday was two rolls. Today we're looking at two hits. And we'll play these things out a couple of ways. And I'll show you some options that we've got to recover and to play it out and have uh, have a decent time. So here we go. Let's go to the table. I'm going to zoom in to the table like so. Oh my God, that's the wrong view. Oh, you know what it is? It's my thing. Hold on. I should have checked this ahead of time. Give me a second to, I got to open this app up here. Give me a second. Mm. While I'm doing that, Dan, yes, I will stream live, 100%. Um, the, the, the Saturday thing will be, a, will be a live stream. Let me go to the table view here. Tiny2K table, table, there it is. Okay, there's a little app that I got that I have to open up and zoom, zoom stuff in before we start. There's the light, and here I come. And the first one that I wanna play with is this inside press and regress to make our 50 bucks. And this one is one that shouldn't be any, any news to you. We've done this before. Um, and, I, and, I, and I've run this a couple of different ways, okay? And I wanna show it to you here today at both levels. We'll do the 66 level and the 110 level. And then I'm gonna get you into the Lagerman and some other ones. But for now, let's just run the basic, the basic skill 66 and the basic 110, just so you can get a sense of, of how these things work and play out. So let's go ahead and get a 66 set up first. Nice and simple. Um, there's 15, 15, and by the way, it's 15 bucks, three unit level per bet. So 66 inside. This is the skill and luck 66 to make 50 bucks. It's the easiest thing on the planet, okay? It's a great walk up. I do this all the time. All the time I do this one. I actually do the next one a little more, but this one here is pretty cool. 66 bucks, we hit a five as the point, okay? There it is. Now let's get a couple of hits. Let's try and get two hits. There's a six, a five, one mixer. So these pay $21. All the bets pay $21, so 21. You have to have an extra buck in your rack. So it's actually $67 to you. You drop that dollar and say, press me 22 inside or press them all by one, however you want to say it. Your dealers understand. Looks like 24, looks like 20. One more hit on the inside. Let's avoid big red here. We got three craps, three, which don't matter. And trust me on the rolls. I know you can't see them on screen, but trust me, um, I'm not gonna lie. There's a five, okay? So the five pays $28, 25, $28, okay? What you can do here is two things. I can A, regress down. This is the way that skill plays. We're gonna regress everything back down to where we started from. So we have $66 again sitting out here, okay? You can turn those bets off. This is way one to play this. What do we have in the rack? 25, 45, 50 bucks, right? 66, one full inside press, pull it all back. Here's your starting money and there's 50 bucks in your rack. Now, you can walk and go home with that 50 bucks in your rack. You can turn your bets off and say, I made my 50 bucks for the shooter. I'm gonna let him go till the seven comes and I'll do it again on the next shooter and just make 50 bucks on the rip per shooter. That's a way to do this, right? Just make your 50 bucks and run. Nice and simple, right? There's no thinking behind this one. There's no algebra here. It's just press and go bye bye Okay, um, what you can do if you're skill and luck is this. You can also at a $10 table, instead of going to 66 and turning your bets off, you can take this extra $22 back to your rack and stay at $44 inside. What does that do to you? Well, let's take a look at our rack. If I take what was in, if we just did that instead, I'm gonna make these whites look like a red chip. And I'm gonna make these reds look like a green chip. And there's 50. 60, 65, 66, $67. That was your initial investment, the 66 plus the one, and a nickel as profit and $44 inside that you can play with. In this way, you didn't earn 50 bucks. You got your money back plus five. It's a $5 win, not a $50 win, but you're still playing on that shooter, okay? That's a way to go 66 to 88, play a little bit, Lock up a little tiny something. Remember we talked about phase one, get out of the hand, lock a tiny bit of profit. Phase two means make profit with what you got left on the table. This is a perfect phase one move into a phase two play. So you could rack the 50, turn your bets off and do it again. 
you could rack the five, lower your bets, and start a new pattern from here and play this out however you want to. You can spread. We can roll this out and see what happens. We got a six. Just play it for a minute while I'm talking. That'll pay 14 bucks. Okay. A lot of things you can do here with this one. Okay. You can take two bucks back and sister press the six and the eight to $18 each and just take two hours back and start working those insides. I'm going to show you how powerful that move can be in a minute. These, these up and downs are so powerful. There's a four, which don't matter. There's a five, which is our point that would pay 15 for $1. Press the five and the nine, little sister press action. Now we have $11 in the rack. The puck is off and we're back to 88 or back to 66 inside, right? Point's gonna be a four. There's a five, sorry, that rolled, that was a five, which pays $21. And now we can take $10 and grab the four and 10. We've got $11 in locked profit. We're all the way across, okay? We're at 66. 76, 86 across. If you take 86, there's 96, there's $98, you have $100 in profit at this point, okay? By building it up, building it out, you're increasing the power of this bet. You're looking at maybe this is gonna be that roll that you got yourself set up for. There's a eight that pays $21, and this might be a good time to just get a collect in there, right? Let's take the same bet. We sister press them, take the same bet, play them out. There's a six. Okay, six hits again, another 21 bucks, right? Not a bad call here to drop a penny. Press them both a little bit, where you can drop three and press them both a lot. Make them both look like 30 bucks now. And now you're on your way to sister press patterning, patterning a monster roll here. They're at 30. And here we go. And again, 30, 60, 90, 100, 115, 130 bucks on the felt. Not bad from a $66 starting point. You can regress wherever you want to. Okay, that's, that's the skill 66 style play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these out because you saw the pattern. That's that pattern of play. That's not a bad one. Now, while I'm on the topic here, let's, and, and again, that can work from 110. We'll do a quick, a quick run here at 110 just so you can see what the 110 inside press and pull looks like because it's a little bit different. It's the same pattern, but you're going to have to drop money from your rack, okay? I'm going to take that, that pretend profit out of there, and I'm going to put $9 in the rack here because we're going to need this. Okay, check this out. Let's go, and well, there's a seven. We'll just... We'll say that we're coming out. Again, I just want to demonstrate the move to you. It doesn't matter the, the numbers just yet. There's a three. There's a, oh my God. Can I just get a freaking point here? There's another three. Um, there's a seven. Good gravy. Seven, three, three, seven. Let's go. Let's go, monster. Okay, there's a hard six. We got a point of six. Now, at the 110 level, you're not going to make enough to do a full press. You're gonna to have to augment it. There's a freaking seven. All right, well, that's cool. Well, we'll put ourselves as down $110. Let's work the recovery. Remember yesterday we talked about recovery? Here's 110 that we're down. Let's try and recover the 110 if we can. While we're at it here, let's let these sevens go bye-bye for a minute. There's an eight. Let's see what happens here. Here's an eight. All right, we hit the eight right away. So here's what happens. This pays 35 bucks. I'm gonna pay it like this. There's 30, and here's five. Okay, $35. Um, we're gonna drop, what I wanna do is, is I wanna get a $44 press. I gotta drop $9 to make it a $44. I, I probably could have paid this in nickels, I guess, right? We wanna make it a $44 inside press, which means 10 here, 12 here, 12 here, and 10 there. Now we're at 154 inside. Puck will be off because we hit the eight, of course. Point's going to be a 10. Now, if we catch our second hit here, let's look at the skill 66. The second inside hit is going to be a, a, a nice fatty. There's a six, one, or six, two, eight, and 42 pays 50 bucks. Okay, 50 for one. We don't, let's pretend we have a dollar and change. 50 for one. 
If I go back to 110, which I'm not gonna do for long, but we'll go back to our 110, where do we get? The skill 66 brought you back 50 bucks. This one brings you back, there's a green chip by the way, 75, 85, 90, four dollars right 94 bucks comes back on that little transit which is wow right 94 bucks what can i do with the 94 bucks well i can take my 110 back right and i'm 96 across for two dollars right i'm 96 across for a two dollar investment if i look at the 90 something dollars that i brought back just now i was i was out 110 okay so what am i light i'm light a little bit what i can do here is make this inside look like 88 dollars there's 75 85, let's go 88 inside and bring back a quarter. There is the 110 that I burned on the first shooter. So now I'm back. Okay, I'm back. This 96 across that I'm gonna, that I, that I could play now is not free. I'm still upside down the $96 if I happen to get a quick seven here, but I'm, at least I can play as though I put it out there the first time, right? Your recovery plan here, that pretty much gets you back what you would have burned on the first one. Now you gotta play the 96 like a pro, right? That's an option there as well, okay? There's, a, there's another builder plan. Um, what I wanna show you now though is my one of my favorites. And this is sort of the, um, this is part of the mechanics of the Philly special, but I wanna show you how powerful these bets can be. So check it out. We're gonna go ahead and do just the five and the nine for 15 bucks each, okay? The six and eight work the same way, but let's do the five and nine, I'll spread them out at $15 each. Let's just work a sister press, all right? Now, I'm gonna roll this out. We're probably not gonna get what I wanna see here, but let me show you the move first so you understand what the sister press does. This is such a great little move. Watch this. Let's say the nine hits. The nine's gonna pay $21. You're gonna split it. Boom, boom. They both get pressed up. By the, same, by the same amount. They both get pressed up by the 20 bucks, right? Dollar goes back to your rack, right? That's move one. Press them both equally. I do this on the, on the six and eight all the time. Press them both equally. On the next hit, these are, these are now $25 bets. The next hit is $35. 25 pays 35. If you go back to the $15 that you started with, 25, $55. Okay, if the sisters joint press and joint go back, that's 50 bucks in rec. It's the exact same thing as a 66, actually a little bit more, right? If you can get the five or the nine to hit twice in the shot, either one, either one, you're out, you're out 50 bucks and you can turn them off. The six and eight are the exact same thing. If you wanna play the, the, the probabilities and go six and eight, six and eight, 18 pays, 21, just like so. You have to drop some money to make the bet work, right? There's no way around it. You gotta drop a couple of bucks in here, right? You're gonna have to drop $3 from your rack to make the bets work, okay? But again, you're gonna be up here at 30 bucks. I gotta take all these back to make it right. Drop three to go to 30. And again, you're at $35 on the win. When you come back down, and again, I'll come back 25, 35. There's the 36 bucks that I started with on the six and eight. And again, I'm at 55. There's the three that I added. So put that back over here. We're at $56 in profit. So the sister press and pull down at $15 level on the six or eight or the five or nine, 50 bucks. Right now it's hard to get them to hit twice. So a lot of times what you'll see people do, myself included, is that $66. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll instead of doing the skill 66, I'll try and do them both. So we can do this. I'll set this up for you. Let's get the 66 back set up again. And this is a little more of, a, of an aggressive move. This is, again, Philly special um, reminiscent because you miss this a lot of times, right? Let's leave... Three bucks in the rack in case we need to get a six or eight. Here we go. Let's let's roll it out. Points 10. I'm just going to just get some random ass numbers in here. There's a four. Doesn't matter. There's an eight. Okay, the eight hits. That's great. And again, it's going to pay $21. 21. We'll drop our three. We'll press them both up. 
This is going to make them both look like $30. We're going to be set up pretty nice here in a second. They're both at 30 bucks. Let's get something else to happen. There's a four. Bummer. I'm going to get them all set up and knock them all down. There's a 10, a six, four. It almost was a seven. Pucks off. Coming out. There's an 11. There's an eight. Okay, the point's going to be eight. Doesn't really matter what our point is. Just for rhythm, it matters. There's a five, a three, two, five. So here... Right, $21. Press the scissors to a quarter. Now, I'm, look at it, I'm a 110 inside from 66. Either one of those pops now, we're gonna get that 50 bucks. There's the nine. Right, nine pays 35, 25, $35. If I bring them both back down, I'll take 30 bucks out of that to 15 bucks. I've pulled $55 off the five and nine. We started out again with $66, right? I got 55 back in the rack. If I can pull that same thing on a six or an eight, let's try and get one of those things to hit. There's the extra buck. There's another freaking four. Jeez, Alou, how many fours am I gonna hit? There's a seven out. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. But if you think about what happened there, 56 bucks, we're, that cost me $10 to have a shot at this. If one of these happened to hit, Let's, let's play it out. If we caught the second sisters to hit, there's $35. And what I would do, again, is go down to $15 per bet. Let's get some, some change here. They go back down to level. And you're out of this hand for $100. And $15, and you're still playing your 66. So technically speaking, there's your $66. You're up 50 bucks and you're playing 66 again. Right? So the sister press and go down, sister press and go down, those are pretty powerful little moves. You can combine them like I just did. Again, it's hard to not, not see a seven, but combining them is a good way to get 50 bucks out of this out of this table. Either one of the sisters wins you 50 bucks and you're gone. If either one of these would have popped, we could have brought the whole thing down to 66 and, and locked up that profit. So I like that as an option too. I think it actually is a, is a pretty solid way to play. So, all right, there's those. Let's go switch screens here. And we'll look at a, a more of a spread it out sort of system, which is like the Lagerman. Now this one costs you more money to run out there with. Let me get my... I dropped a bunch of chips, I'm sorry. The Lagerman basically is this. We're gonna be at 88 inside. We're gonna start out with four unit bets across the inside. And this can also be pumped up. This can be bumped way up. We'll do 88 there and we'll do $10 on the outsides. All right, so it's 88, 98, 108, 108, okay? The goal here is to get playing 66 across paid for. That's the goal of the original Lagerman. We can use this exact way of playing to get our 50 bucks. Here we go. Come out seven and nobody cares. And I realize I'm not watching your chats. I know I can't see them from where I am. So sorry about that. But there's the eight as the, po as the point. There's the seven out. Let's put the 108 over here. Right? 0.7 outs. Oh yeah, they happen. Oh yeah, this strategy is the best until that happens, right? Everybody has the perfect strategy until the seven comes. And she comes, look at three sevens in a row, three five two sevens in a row. Some, some might say my four five two sevens, some might say my table is cursed. I know a guy, you know a guy, actually one of our subscribers, he plays um, at a casino that he swears is rigged. Um, that's five sevens in a row, in case you're keeping track. Um, and because he sees this a lot, all these crazy numbers of sevens in a row on that table, but also they're all the same kind. Like he's like, there's no way, like one in a trillion possibility that 90% of the sevens are four, three. Look at this, another, is that six sevens in a row that I've thrown? There's no way that 90% of the sevens are four threes. He's like, the dice are rigged. Another one, that's eight sevens in a row. Are you guys keeping track of this? Eight sevens in a row. Wow. 
monster roll is coming, right? Because I burned all my sevens. That means that the dice know that the seven's not going to come anymore, right? Is that what you all think? Because I've thrown eight in a row, we've, we've, bucked, we, we've bucked math, and now we're going to, the seven's not due for a long time. I think that's bullshit. Probably throw one right here. Anyway, here we go. Loggerman. Let's make the Loggerman work. There's the seven. See that? Boom. Seven. Another one, 108. God. I'm going to write David. Every time I do the Loggerman, um, I burn every single time. I've, I've shown this strategy like five times. I've never had it work live. And I know it's not the strategy's fault. It's the dice do what the dice do. I've never, I've never demonstrated the Loggerman actually working. Here we go. There's an eight is the point. There's a five. Hey. All right. So the five, we know, pays $28. I'm going to do 25, $28. And there's all sorts of things you can do here with this, right? You've got enough to do a full inside press and make the inside look like 110. You have enough to make the four and 10 look like $15. Make the five and nine look like $25. And either the six or eight now looks like 30, okay? You can and probably should drop three bucks. Drop three bucks from your rack so you can press up the six as well to 30 bucks. Now you've got everything jacked up. So it's 108 plus three, it's $111 investment. One hit. Go to 15, go to 110 inside, it costs you three more bucks. Now, the next hit in here is gonna be the quote unquote money shot if I can get it. There's an 11. So the dice are gonna make me wait. There's a 10 hard. Okay, we get a hard 10, and that pays $28 on the end or $27 on the end here. Okay, now, what do we do here? Remember, we started out with 108. Okay, probably what you do is what the goal of the strategy was, which is this, 25, 50, 60, five bucks, we'll go 64 across. If I go 64 across, there's 75, there's 102 bucks. I got $102 in my rack, I'm gonna be playing 64 across, I'll get a penny for that, so it's $103 in my rack. Remember I started out with 108 plus, plus three, so 111, I have 103 here. So I'm basically playing 64 across for $8. That's what the Loggerman does. It gets me across in a couple of hits for eight bucks. I could have taken that first hit and gotten all four and 10, or I could have just done an inside press, or I could have done what I wanted to do with it. I chose to spread that money around to make all the bets a little bit stronger. And there we go. Now I'm playing 64 across. My money essentially is back. One hit in here, one same bet, and my money's back is how I look at that. You could just say, well, shit, I worked my ass off for that. I'm done. I got one of these back. That's my recovery. I'll try it again and try and recover the second one. Then I'll go 164, or then I'll go 64 across. There's the Loggerman, okay? The, um, the squeeze play works kind of the same way. Um, the squeeze play, I'll show you that one. It's a little bit different because you start off a little higher on the inside, and... I'll do it at 110, but you can, of course, do it at 220. It's, this, it's the same move either way. Quick 50 bucks here if we can do it. Let's get 110 inside. There's 110. Let's catch a point. We're actually, I guess we're, we're kind of on a point, right? We're on a point of eight. There's a five. So the five pays 35 bucks. Okay. There's $35, okay? 15 to the four and 10. Five to your rack. Then we catch an eight. That's awesome. Eight pays 35 bucks, 25, 35 bucks. And again, the intent here is to go down to table minimum 64 across. So there's 25, 50, 65. There's your 64 across. There's your, there's your $110 back. So 64 across is your next bet or you have made your 50 bucks, right? 110 inside, spread out to the four and 10. That way if you catch a four and 10, you're gonna get paid and now you're out. Money back in the rack, 50 bucks in profit plus $15 to, uh, to buy some cigarettes with if you want to. There's your, there's your earn 50 bucks in a, couple of, in a couple of hits. 
super quick. You could, again, like the skill 66, reinvest this. 64 across. Play for free or, boom, I did it. Thank the Lord in heaven, I got my, I got my money back. Rack that up, next shooter. Or, same shooter, reset the table if you want to. Let's reset the table and there's an eight. Great, 30 bucks. $15 there, $15 there, five into the rack. There's a yo, 11 yo, doesn't matter. There's a nine. Five, four, nine pays, you know it, $35. Go back down to the 110. And now I've got 25, there's 50. There's that same 65 bucks coming back. And if you look at this now, there's 110, my initial money. There's 25, 30 in locked profit. And I'm playing again at 110. Yeah, I can pull the 110 down and guess who's going home right now with 140 bucks. That's me, right? That thing works. Again, you get two hits. The nice thing about the loggerman and the squeeze play is you end up with all the way across. First hit, no matter what happens, you're all the way across. The loggerman, you're kind of already there. The squeeze play, you get there. Second hit, bye bye If you're smart about it and pull that 50 bucks back and just turn your shit off, you got 50 bucks. If you want to try it again with the same money, great. We just did that. We hit the 50 bucks twice. That gives us a lock, our money back, and then we have options. I think that's a really cool way to do it. I love the loggerman. I love the squeeze play. They're hard, right? It's always hard to get the two hits. Sometimes they make it look easy with the, like I did with the 66. Sometimes we make that look a little bit harder than it ought to be. So let's move ahead. Let's do one more. Uh, this one here comes for us from, uh, from, from Shad Channel, one of our subscribers, gives us this one, which is cool. This is kind of like the skill switch, but he does is 50 bucks on the dome. Boom, puck is gonna be off. We're gonna catch us a point. We got a yo, 11 yo. All right, that's cool. We're gonna have to recover 50 bucks. I'm gonna put the loss right here. We gotta recover that 50 bucks. Can we do it? There's a seven. Oh my God, we're gonna get destroyed here. We're gonna lose another 50 bucks. Now he's in trouble. I wanna show you the move though. Another seven. Oh my God, jeez. We're gonna, we're gonna keep that down there, but I wanna show you the move if we can make the move. Good gravy. 11, holy hell, look at that. One, two, three, four straight come out losers for that poor little don't guy. Another one, holy freaking moly. Five straight don't losses. <laughs> and we got our winner, a three ace deuce winner. There's one, I'm gonna put these in here, wow. What a freaking nightmare, huh? There's a nine. Okay, we got a nine. So what he does is this. We get, we get this. He's going to go $15 level on the remaining inside numbers. Now, if we happen to catch an outside number as the point, he would still only pick three of the insides. Okay, we're going to pick the three that are not the point. And it's going to be basically a skill 66 from here. Okay. Now, again, we're kind of screwed down here because we lost so many come out bets, but doesn't matter, $21. What we're gonna do here is this, we're gonna, we're gonna press the six and eight by one each, okay? I will um, drop a buck from the rack to make that bet even and put the whole remaining bet on the five. Make that five look like a quarter, okay? Actually, I'll leave it as, I'll leave it as red chips because we're gonna end up reducing it. So there's your first inside hit. We can avoid the nine, and we do. We got a six, okay? We got a six. That pays $28. And again, just like the skill 66, coming back to 28, bring them all back to the three unit size and turn them off. In his case, we turn them off. And here's why you turn them off. We got 25, 20, and five. That's 50 bucks. There's your $50 in that role and the don't pass keeps you safe during that, okay? You can elect at this point to, again, leave these off. You can let this ride out, fight the seven against the nine, or you can place the nine. Place the nine for 40 or 50 bucks, whatever you wanna do, and who cares, right? This was here 
so you could win the 50 bucks. A lot of people play hybrid this way, which is like, hey, I got this out here so my other thing works. My other thing works, I got my 50 bucks back in the rack, I don't care about this bet. This was only here as a tool, okay? If you let it ride out there, then what happens is you, you could win another 50, which is fantastic, and start paying some of these debts off, or you could lose 50 and be nowhere. That's your choice here. You have those choices. Lose 50, be nowhere, win 50, be somewhere, or hedge it the hell off and just not care. Let, let the roll happen, turn these bets off, you did your thing, wait to the next shooter. All of those are options. I'm going to let it ride, and in fact, if I had a point of four or 10, what I would probably do is take this 50 or that 50 as odds against it. When you're getting beat up in here, a lot of times, and here's that, that, that ace-deuce we had, a lot of times taking those odds, I gotta make that look like 60, taking those odds is the best thing you can do to wait the seven out, right? Let's just do it. Let's just put the odds up in there. I, I like doing this, especially if I'm, if I'm in recovery mode, when you get beat on the come out. That's a, odds is a great way to recover that. And we'll let it ride itself out. There's an 11. There's a six. Again, these bets are off. We're not, we're, we, they did their job, they're out. We don't care. We're playing for 50 bucks. We got our 50 bucks. We're gonna try and we're gonna try and double tap, double tap the uh, the seven here. Now all those sevens before means the seven is going to disappear now, right? Here we go. No, it doesn't mean that at all. The dice don't give a shit. What I had before eight, eight is great for everybody but me. There's a four. We are all over the place. We is all over the place. There is a nine. All right, so our gambit did not work. Okay, we thought we could. Power, power, play the thing and get extra money. We would have won 50 plus 60 would have paid 40. We would have won 90 bucks, which would have basically covered two of these things, right? As it is, we got nothing out of that, right? We had nothing out. This is enough money to go back out to the adult, 50 bucks again, and start the process. We got zero out of that. We burned our, our ace deuce win and we burned our chance. We're even here, we're still down the five units. But that's how that, that play works, right? I like that play a lot on its basic face. I like the basics of 50 bucks down there. Let's play it out one more time. Let's maybe not have the come out disaster we had last time. There's a hard 10. We're gonna pick any three numbers. We'll pick the five, six, and eight. That's, it doesn't matter. Um, there's a nine. Of course, we pick the one we're not getting paid on, right? Uh, or don't pick that one. There's a six, five, one, six. So again, press them up, right? Pays $21. We're gonna press up. And again, I'll, I'll make this nice and easy. We're gonna make the eight look like 24. Um, I'll drop a buck. Um, let's see, I'm gonna make the six. Actually, we'll do this. We're gonna take the five as whites. Make the six also look like 24 like so, and I will drop the buck now, so you can see it, to make the five look like a quarter. Okay, there we go. There's a four, it don't matter. We'll do the same, let's same move. Let's, let's, make this, let's make this whole freaking thing happen, shall we? There's an eight hard, all right, eight hard, that's great. Eight hard pays uh, 24, pays $28. That's great. Back down to 66, all right? We got two inside hits. Protected by that don't. This looks like 50 bucks to me. I'm gonna go ahead and color all that shit up. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong pile. And we're gonna make that look like odds against that 10. I gotta get this other nickel out of here. There we go. These are off. Play for the seven. Play for the seven. Remember the 50 bucks we won, we put it right back out there. Just reinvested it. Bang out a seven, get our money back, or ride this ugly train that I'm on and this poor shooter will keep losing his money, right? There's the seven, six one. All right, six one seven, that's great. Win the don't, which is awesome. The 50 bucks that we won up here, we just turned it into 75 bucks, right? There's your 50, there's your initial, there's 125. That covers half of the ass kickings that we got earlier, okay? 
So now you look at like, okay, we, we've recovered part of our earlier stuff. Run the thing again. Run it again. Run it again. I like that. I like that switch from two inside hits, grab my 50 bucks, drop it on his odds, and beat the crap out of the seven. I love that little transition. It's like, it's like two transitions in one. Hell of a fun way to play. Very, very cool. All right. The last one for the day is going to be this, my horseman. Easy way to win 50 bucks if you can catch it. Okay, we'll do the simple version of it. I like a two to one. I like it better four to one, but two to one's fine. We're gonna go two units on the don't and three one unit come bets. There's lots of ways to win two. All we're looking for is two units here, right? 50 bucks is two units. If we get lucky, we're gonna be in good shape. Okay, if not, it could be a fight. But as you know, the horseman right now with one unit in the come, if the seven comes here, you win three units and you're at home, okay? We just don't wanna see a nine, right? Stay off the nine, there's the seven, and there's the horseman doing its thing, right? One and two, and we're out of here. Bye-bye, 50 bucks, actually 75, and we're home, okay? Bye-bye, there you go. That's a nice way to do it. Let's do it again, that was way too easy, right? Perfect storm, way too easy, let's do it again. I'll, I'll give you a little bit, little bit better sense of rhythm and then we'll get out of here. There's a 10, perfect, great point. Let's come through. There's a four, I don't love the come bets going to the four, but now, second come bet, if a seven comes here, you lose one, you win three, you're up that two units. So looking to make 50 bucks, if a seven comes now, we're gonna be good. As it is, we get an 11, which is great, that wins a unit. Now the seven comes, and we're, Actually out, oh, we lost it. There's a one, two, three, that goes away. So we're back to potentially being even. Hey, look at that, the four pays, that's cool. This goes to the four, this comes down and gets paid. Back in the come it goes. Hard six, three, three, hard six, that's there. And we have two units in the rack, right? We only have two combat set, we got our third one going. Five, all right, now we're now we're, we're a right side player. We're right here. You're at three come bets that are good. You got one don't pass, that's fine. You need to have these things. This is like not, not where I wanna be. A um, lot of options though, right? You could hedge the don't if you want to. You could drop odds against the 10, which is the fine thing to do. I could take this 25, I need more, but drop down there as odds. Pray to God we get a six. Instead, we get this. We lose on our point. And now watch, here comes the come out seven. This is gonna be the kryptonite. Oh, we didn't. We got an eight. Okay, let these things ride out. Ken was asking questions, what do I do? If I lose my don't, I'm done. It was four units. It was two units or, or five. Two units here, three units here. If we lose it, we lose it. Say levy. Three, two, five. That pays. One, two, three units in the rack. Seven out. So on that, on that run, as bad as it was, two units here, three units up here, it's five total, we have three left. We actually only lost two units in that streak, right? Coming back and winning 50 and three and three, three, it, the 50 bucks can come pretty easy or you can end up kind of floating around like we just did. That's a good way to do it too. 50 bucks is pretty simple on most shooters with the, with the horseman. Most of the time you get that first, second, third, Roll seven, and you're gonna be in River City nice and quick, but I think we gotta get out of here. It's about time, time to settle up, time to settle up and get out of here. Um, let me go, um, let me go check my PCs, and let's see, let me change the screen back to me, and go over here, and before we check questions, I'll remind you what's on tap rest of the day. Rest of the day, we have LFC, Arnell at five o'clock tonight. Big AZ's going live, uh, or uh, premier Yahtzee challenge at seven o'clock, like always. And Wednesday night live at 7.30. So that's gonna be the what's happening tonight. Of course, Joe goes tomorrow morning, and I'm reminding you again about the Saturday morning live fight. That will be streamed live. And yes, Jen, you'll have to do your hair. You're gonna be on camera with everybody else. Everybody clean your hands, cut your fingernails, you're gonna be on. You're all gonna be on TV with me, for sure. Um, yeah, the seven is real. I'm showing all the options. I want you to see, skill, what all you can do. I think a lot of people 
don't know their options, right? So to me, when I pull off a move like the 66, the up and down, take your 50 bucks and stop playing. That's totally fine. Take your 50 bucks and put odds on the don't. That's fine. Take your 50 bucks, reduce down to, to 44 inside and play for free. You have all the ways you can play, right? The seven's a real thing. The seven will take your money at some point if you're on the right side. Always, it'll take your money. It's a matter of, is it taking money out of your rack or taking money out of your winnings? And that's where that comes from. So I think seeing the options is an important thing, especially when you see these things go down and how they can kind of run back up there. So um, I do believe the individual bubbles are rigged. Um, not, And I say rigged. Rigged is the wrong word. I don't mean to say rigged because rigged, Rigged implies that it's against you, that they're trying to, to, to sucker you away. I don't believe they're rigged. I believe that, they're, that the, the outcomes are computer generated. I think there's an RNG, I know there is an RNG in the bubble crash machines. The company has said that there is an RNG in there, which means a computer determines the outcome. I don't necessarily believe that the outcome is determined in a way to beat you, but the machine does know how much it's paid and how much it has to pay legally. So it will do some adjustments in there and favor certain buckets of outcomes to make sure that it's bringing back the money or paying out the money that it has to. It's got to do that. And I believe that the dice are presenting the, computer, the computer's um, decision. That's what I believe on bubble craps. I don't think it's rigged, but I believe that it's, it's definitely an RNG. They're definitely slots. We talked about this the other day. In California, they have to use cards, playing cards, right? For craps and for roulette because dice cannot determine the outcome of a game, right? You cannot have the random outcome determined by the dice or by the marble. That's why they use cards in California. It's the whole reason for the cards. If that's true, then bubble craps cannot be, the dice cannot determine the outcome legally, right? If, if, if you can't throw the dice and determine the outcome in a random game, then dice in a bubble cannot also be determining your outcome. It's got to be computer generated. That, that's, the, that's all the proof you need to know that there's an RNG there. It is what it is, right? Doesn't mean it's rigged, for sure. Um, yeah, right? Let's hope that I, Royce, let's hope that I burned my sevens around this table right here. I, boy, that would be great, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. And yeah, and the, the reason why it's not allowed in Washington, not because it's, it's a slot machine. Yeah, it, that's the thing. It's, it's the type three, type three slot types, which is, which is weird. And, and I don't know that I even trust the slots because of that weird rule, the way they work up here. It's, 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 a, it's, an, it's a little weird. Washington has told us, but Ian's talked to the guy who runs the gambling commission here in Washington, Ian Olson. And he's like, the guy told him, we're like 15 years behind the curve here in, in, in our state. We're so far behind the way everybody else does it. So um, yeah, you say the dice are the RNG, but, they, but I think they can't be. I think they, the, the cubes cannot determine the outcome. I think it's got to, otherwise they would let you do it on the table and you would be a human RNG. I think there's something to this. And I know that the guy who, who owns the company has talked to David at Casino Quest and um, they've told him that it's an RNG behind the scenes. So um, yeah, it is, they say it's random it, and RNGs are random. Don't forget, RNGs are random, right? It's not like they're fake or they're against you, but they're slots. They are slots. Anyway, I don't know why have we gotten that subject. Um, that was my, that was my, this year, that was the q and I didn't change my screen. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't see my first PC about CQ. What is that? Uh, oh, CQ live at eight central Vegas rants and raves. They, oh, you know what? No. Yes. And no. Let's answer that question. Yes. And no. Um, David and I are good friends. Alex and I, good friends. We, when I'm in Vegas, we hang out, we talk, we, but those guys are awesome and they love us. They love what we're doing as a group. They think this community is great. Um, they're, I don't want to say that they're too big for us, but they're, they're at 125,000 subscribers. We're not <laughs> right. We don't really add value to them right now. Um, they would add a, immense value to us. We have been talking about finding a way to make the channel happen though. Like how do we make the TV station happen that I want to do? There may be some symbiosis there with us. Um, but yeah, I don't see them doing lives on our channel anytime soon. Um, but I do see them being guests and hanging out and they're wanting to help whatever they can do to help us out. They're willing to do. They're all about it. They're all about like, we want you guys to grow. It's more great content. They love what we're doing. But as far as being business partners, probably not. And as far as them being 
content produces for CGTV? Probably not. We're probably going to be going down this parallel road, which is fine. Their, their content is way different than our content. We don't really cross streams at all. It's, it's, they just got different things done than we do, right? Some of those things, the 30 roll challenges would be great for our channel. Um, I'd love to have those things live stream, but that, again, that's, 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 also a big part of how they market their, their core business too. So we don't want to step on their toes there either. Um, I can definitely see a world where we work together on lots of things. And we are planning to work together on lots and lots of things. We've talked about it. All I got to do is move there and we can do a lot more, lot more, lot more conjoined content and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't see them in, in CDTV being, being a, a, a joined up company at some point. We will be going here, but there'll be lots and lots of of non-contractual crossover. Let's put it that way. All right. Um, that's it. I think we're a little over time, right? It's 9.03. I've got to get up to do the, the daily paycheck. So um, again, I will give my, my next final thought is this. I always say this. I hope the show's good. You know, I, I you know, I'm, the $50 a day thing is a fun idea. I hope that these strategies and the options that I gave you and the the the, the live legit rollouts that you saw there give you a sense of like what's possible how hard it is to make two hits. The Lagerman seems great. The squeeze play seems great. The 66 seems great. The 110 press and pull seems great. Sister press and pull seems great until you roll eight sevens in a row, right? That little don't pass hedge play, eight sevens in a row I rolled today. It happens, you know? And you can say all you want, because he rolled a seven, another one's coming. I wouldn't go there. I would go and say, I'm budgeting X per shooter. And if I blow my budget, I'm not going to keep digging in. That would be a reason not to, not to bet eight times in a freaking row like we did. But actually I had eight times in a row plus five times, right? We had eight sevens in a row. Then I had five come out losers for the don't. Awful day of rolling. But that's the reality of it. When you hear people say this can't happen, that shit can happen, right? When I tell you, don't work the come out, Alfredo, don't, don't, don't work the come out, right? There's a reason why you don't work your inside bets on the come out, right? If you're a place better, don't work the come out. And it's not because you're afraid of the seven. The seven's always there. Working the come out over and over. If I did 110 inside on the come and worked it on the come out every single time, I would have burned almost a thousand bucks in that series right there. That eight, that eight in a row. That would have been 110 eight times in a row. Right? What is that? 880 bucks we would have burned right there. If you're working the come out on your place bets, like some people think you should do, don't do it. On a regular place bet in the point cycle, you can only lose your money one time. If you're working the come out, you can lose it eight times. And you just saw that. So that's my final thought. Be careful with your freaking money, please. Right? Follow the math, follow the rhythm of the game. Follow, if you're place betting, follow the puck. The puck is your friend if you're place betting. That's all I got to say. Y'all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the garage for uh, daily paycheck. Let's give me a, give me about 10 minutes to get myself together and get started and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you out there. Fresh cup of Java. And uh, if I don't see you out there, y'all have a great Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow. Love y'all. God bless. Bye.